righty, folks. Welcome back to the Mushing Alaska podcast. We're your hosts, Brendan and Sean, and super excited for our next episode. Um, we're going to kind of switch things up a little bit in terms of our format. We've kind of notoriously just gotten straight into an interview, and um, we're going to kind of switch things up a little bit and have like a little bit of an intro and kind of cover anything that maybe is worth discussing uh, since our last podcast was released. And then we'll get into the actual interview portion of our of our podcast. And so do want to just take a moment now to make sure if you haven't already to like and, and subscribe and follow us on all the various platforms. Um, we release this podcast on all the major um platforms so in terms of finding our podcast you should be able to find us and then we're on facebook and we're on instagram and then we are also on youtube and youtube what we like to do is um we just released the podcast on youtube if someone wants to watch it they can see our guest or if they you know don't prefer to use a different platform to to listen to it they can watch it there and li- and watch or listen um and then we also during the Iditarod do some uh some more coverage of that race as well and last year we did a bunch of pre-recorded things and then released it almost every day i think for this upcoming race in 24 we're going to be doing some live videos on youtube as well so i kind of said all that to say that uh liking subscribing following us supporting us we very much appreciate that we're continuing to want to and desire to grow this and continue to get more get even better and more consistent at everything as well um so i wanted to just take a moment and remind you guys of that and then uh kind of getting into this new format of how we're going to do things um since our last episode aired um a couple of new things happened that i wanted to bring up as i record this introduction to this episode sean's actually currently in the middle of a hunt uh sean's been in for maybe the last three or so weeks has been based out of denali and his his community of friends there um they invited him on a hunt i think they were looking for a moose and so i know that he's kind of on the back end of that trip now um but we wanted to get out this next episode regardless of this introduction so i felt like i would kind of grab the bull by the horns um, and I say all that to say is essentially like I'm going to bring up these two different bits of information, but I don't have, you know, the in-depth analysis that Sean can probably provide, um, which I'll kind of detail in just a moment. But the first the first thing that for me was exciting that I can talk about um, because I'm able to just do a little research is that there was a new sign up. So welcome to the Iditarod, Jeff Reed. Um, and his story is really cool. I was kind of just doing a little bit of clicking around. He is a, a Navy SEAL who relocated to two rivers um, after two two stints in Afghanistan. And, um, you know, just I think it's really an interesting story of his uh, just kind of, like I said, just glancing over everything. He originally worked with Ali Zirkel and Alan Moore and got some dogs from them he got some dogs from sebastian schnoll shout out to sebastian schnoll for he's been on before and so he he started his uh his kennels called frozen trident and so you can check out their website frozen trident.com uh i would tell you to give them a follow on facebook and on instagram as well um, just again, just doing a brief kind of scroll through everything, very lots of videos, very interactive. Um, so just excited that we have another racer to to talk about for the Iditarod. And maybe that could be a possible uh guest we have on down the road as well. 
Uh, we definitely want to cover some of the rookies. You know, we had Laura on just two episodes ago. Um, so that could be another candidate for, for, uh, an episode down the line. So again, welcome to the Iditarod Jeff Reed. And then the other kind of news story that I saw, it's not like news story, but I guess my thought is like, no one's really covering what's going on in the world. And I'm sure you all, uh, in terms of like mushers, you guys know about this stuff, but I figure it's worth talking about. Um, and that is that saw some kind of like some drama going on with the Willow 300 and saw something on, on Twitter where um looked like there was a difference of opinions is what I'll say between the board and uh, some members of the lodge where it's held at. And so it looks like it was trending towards not happening at all. Now I say this as the brother who lives in Atlanta, who doesn't really have any true connections into the the mushing community. And so again, without Sean here, he would probably be able to break that, that down a little bit more. Um, but I'm wondering, I'm hoping, I'm wondering if there's maybe some sort of solution or if maybe there's a quick act acting group of people that can kind of come up with something in its place. It would be a shame to, to lose that race this year. Um, we've enjoyed talking about it in the past and um so you know we'll see what happens there but i felt like it was at least worth bringing up and and when sean's back when we're doing our next episode uh we'll certainly have his take on things and maybe we can talk to someone else within the community and and gather some more details and and bring that to you as well so uh that's it for the the intro part of this of this podcast this episode um, so I'll go ahead and kind of transition and, and we'll, uh, we'll bring in the next part of that. And that's the interview that we did with Ryan Reddington. We recorded this a few weeks ago and, um, just want to, you know, thank him for his time. He, he was a wonderful guest to have on. And I think, you know, Sean and I, we, we have the gift of the gab. So I think deep down inside, we probably could have picked his brain for another couple of hours. Um, but we did our best to kind of keep this right around an hour, a little bit over. Um, so we hope that you all enjoy. And again, if you're not liking or subscribing or following us, please do. And I will also just throw this out there for you all. Um, we would love some feedback, you know, uh, what are some things that you'd like to maybe hear? Who are some guests that maybe you would like for us to have on? Um, so we encourage you to send that to us. We have our Facebook page. We have Instagram. You can send us a direct message. We would love to, to interact with you and get that feedback. Um, we hope that you're enjoying this podcast in general. And obviously, we hope you enjoy this, this next interview. Welcome on our next guest, Mr. Ryan Reddington, Iditarod winner 2023. Yeah, thank you guys very much. I really enjoy listening to you and your brother. So it's uh, always, always fun to hear you say, all, all righty, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, we really, pre we've had some great feedback from you and from uh, other people in the mushing community. And we it might not be the, the biggest fan base ever or whatever, just community of people that want to talk about dogs, you know. So it's, uh, but it's they're great people that are in that community. And, um, you know, it's it's been it's been really fun getting to just sit down in a warm house where there's a heater and talk about all the mushing things while you guys are out there freezing, freezing your fingers off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you so much for joining us, man. And, and uh, it's it's cool to finally talk to you. Um, so, and I, Brennan. And well, yeah. like, all right. So I just want to like jump in here and say, so one thing I thought that was pretty cool is, uh, so Sean was, uh, this is maybe a month or two ago, Sean was out doing his salmon run and I'm like scrolling through Facebook and all of a sudden I see a, a, a message and I'm like, oh, you know, I don't usually check my messages, honestly, but I happen to be on and check and I'm like, oh, this is a message from Ryan Reddington. I'm like, I don't even know. I don't know you. We're not friends at the time. And I'm just like. Huh. And then I just 
I thought I would share that you had reached out and, you know, like you said, you're a fan and that we're doing a good job and it's good. It's nice to hear that support. And, um, like Sean has some friends that, that he, he has in the community that have given us some feedback, but we don't have like that established relationship with you. So it's good to get that feedback. And just, I thought it would be kind of cool to share that. Um, so thank you. But, um, what I was going to ask you about is like, how's it been since you won? It's probably been a whirlwind. I know that you've been kind of like going around town. Can you just kind of tell us a little bit about what you've been up to? Baking hands, kissing babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After I won, I, I went to some of the villages along the Kobuk 440, Kotzebue and Shugnack and Ambler and, um, Kobuk and I did school school talks in all four of those villages and then I've been doing school talks and Kinnick and Wasilla as well as as Girdwood and Skagway and I'm sure there's a couple others that I'm forgetting but it's been a lot of fun and it's been great to to go out to different communities and and it's a lot of fun talking about Iditarod and the race and how cool cool the dogs are and and um uh, it it's pretty cool also going to the like the grocery store and um and um other spots around town that so many people will come up to me and, and congratulate me people that i've never never seen before or talked with you know and they 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 recognize me and and want to talk and and uh i did a lot and and just been a lot a of, lot of fun and um and i've been running dogs all summer as well and it's been it's been going good and my last day of of mush and dogs and girdwood for the summer was was yesterday so um i'm excited to get further along in um in fall here and i'll start my more advanced training here soon in in wisconsin yeah so th that was actually what i wanted to ask uh so you've been in girdwood for the summer but you've also been going around to your different areas but I, you're going to go back to Wisconsin. Like what, what does that look like right now? It sounds like you've been kind of on the road nonstop. Yeah. I, yeah, I went to Skagway in May and, and worked on the princess cruise ships and, and did presentations on each ship that come to Skagway. And I will go back there in a couple of days. I'll start driving back there. And for uh, the next nine ships that come to Skagway apprentice ships, I'll go on there and, and do presentations on there and meet, meet everybody. And, and, um, I'll wear my parka with my bib and, and, um, and, um, meet a lot of good dog people. And, and, um, and I'll be sure to tell them about you guys. It's, um, I, I love, I love, um, different ways where the fans and can learn about the sport and, um, uh, and yeah. Yep. Right on. You know, and then, Go ahead, Brett Ryan. Then I, then I go um, to Nome in um, in a couple weeks, and I'll uh, work on a on a ship from Nome to Vancouver, and um, so I'm excited about that as well. And I'll do um, five presentations on there, um, not all about mushing, some about my Eskimo heritage and culture, and as well as um, a lot about like one one presentation will be about um gold rush the alaska gold rush nice yeah that's awesome man yeah that'd be fun to to delve into and uh that there, everything's all intertwined the gold rush and the mushing and the iditarod trail that's all uh and native history and um it's all just one ecosystem that flows together and uh you know I was, you were telling me you're, you're going to wear your parka. And I was thinking about your bright green parka with your bright green sled bag and your bright green <laughs> booties and the bright green <laughs> dog jackets. Well, what's up with the green? You just, it's your favorite color. So you just you're like, you know, it's nice to know who the musher is because you get out there and you never see their face because it's cold. Well, maybe that you do, but you know, Laura never wears a hoodie. He's just got frost running down his whole face. But most people that are seeing, <laughs> are covering their face and uh <clears throat> but you never know who's who you only know by their kits and their sleds and their dogs 
you certainly could probably see <laughs> some some lead dogs pass you on the trail and be like, oh yeah, that's that's Dallas or that's you know Dee Dee or whoever. But why green? Yeah, other than my fast dogs, I I think um, um, green is a good way to spot us, and um, and it's also um, it's my favorite color. Green is the same color as the lights, and green means go and. Um, yeah yeah checks out simple <laughs> enough i like it <laughs> um so you have we go back to like your iditarod career you know you've been how many iditarods have you run you know uh it's it's got you've been in it every, a, a lot of years and uh you know brennan's is pulling that stuff up right now nine nine yeah nine nine one thousand miles well i finished i finished i finished nine i raced 16 so there's some okay. that i've scratched um yeah i ran my first i did route in 2001 and yeah. um i took some years off and went down and raced uh, in wyoming utah idaho and montana and the wyoming stage top and some other races around around the midwest and Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin, and uh, just rebuilding my team, and um, and it cost a lot to race in the I did it out, so I took some years off to also save money to to um, to have it to be able to race, and um, but yeah, I had some some I did that it didn't go didn't go my way. Some years we had very poor training and didn't have a lot of the availability to put a lot of miles on the docks. And, um, and I had to, I had to scratch from some races in the Iditarod, but I figured out going down to Northern Wisconsin, we get a chance of getting on snow a little bit longer. And, um, and my breed of dogs have, have changed some too. And, um, we, we figured, figured it out. Um, I did her out a little bit on, um, on how how to finish it and finish it well and and um uh, yeah there's a lot that goes into i did a rod and and um uh, and sleep deprivation i i battled and struggled with that you know and um uh, and um some sometimes um that that's just uh, a part of the race that um uh, that it it affected me and um but now now I'm a little older and it, I handle the lack of sleep better and, and, um, that helped. I, I was, I remember looking at your interviews and being like, man, this guy is like just crushing these interviews that typically people are like, yeah, trail was good. Yeah. Dogs look great. You're like giving like pretty like well put together, you know, answers. I was like, man, this makes this look so easy, you know, and even the people in the back of the pack that are getting, double the rest are still struggling too you know it's just being it's it's tough so yeah that's amazing that how the improvement that's what you love to see like just like you've been steadily improving in like the last four years you were you know pretty far up there i remember uh 2021 you know being pretty close and and uh it's been a steady kind of climb and improvement and that's you know that's what it's all about is you know seeing that growth happen and with yourself and your dog team and and yeah like what do you think uh like your dogs what are what is something in your dog team that's like a, like a this is a my dog team excels at this and maybe there aren't the best at that you know is it you know they had great appetites yeah. but maybe they're a little smaller or like what what what's unique about your dog team besides that they're the fastest team on earth <laughs> i don't know if they're the fastest but i do think they <laughs> they my dog team has a big strength on it when it gets warm you know when it when the race is warm Wisconsin. i feel like um well, and we train all summer and in Girdwood in the years past, we trained in Skagway and Juneau and I've been doing that since I've been 18. And so generation after generation of my dogs, they've been running all every day throughout the summer. Well, about, about five days a week. And, um, and I think that, that has helped my, my dogs seem to, um, 
they love they they perform really good in warm warm weather and um when i hear others that that are are um talking about the heat and and maybe their dogs aren't aren't eating as good because it is warm um that my dog's appetites in the heat had um is remarkable um it, that hmm. that doesn't seem to bother bother them um as much and i don't know if it is because i've like i said generation after generation um for the last 20 years i've been i've been um working working um in southeast alaska giving sled dog rides and and up here in girdwood um a combination and so i i don't know but i know um when it does get warm um i i welcome it um because my dogs do well in it um yeah hmm. That's a very interesting strength. I, I don't feel like too many dog teams probably have that strength, especially not ones that are based full time in Alaska, you know, well, especially um, in places like Fairbanks yeah. and Denali and even Willow, you know, it's pretty damn cold there. And yeah, you know, Wisconsin, you got that. Wade was saying this to me, to us, Ryan, and he, that, that, uh, that the weather in like January, December in Wisconsin is that is just pretty similar to what you're going to see in March on the trail. Uh, yeah. The last couple of years I have seen it, um, cold in, in, in Wisconsin there. Um, one year it, when, every time that I call back home and, um, talk to my family, we I think every day we were colder, um, in Wisconsin than we were up here in, in Wasilla Willow area. But, um, but most of the time, like this last couple of years, it's been 20 to 30 above. Um, and it's just perfect, perfect temperature, um, for mushing. And, and, um, at least for me, it makes me want to go out and train, train more. And, and when it is nice like that. And, um, uh, yeah, so this last yeah. year, we didn't miss a single day of training. Um, we, we, we had beautiful snow and, um, it was it it was really really good and I run on the snowmobile trails down down there and um, so I I got the luxury of of uh, really smooth tr trails and I don't have to do trail work um, and so um, instead of going out and grooming and making a trail um, I I got the luxury of hooking up twenty six dogs and 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 going out on a really perfect trail. And um, big teams, 24, 26 dogs in a team and and um, running sometimes three to four at a breast and where they could be closer to me. Um, it's nicer to I like doing that a lot where I could watch them more closer to me and um, where they're not when you run a big team like that, they're farther way up the line. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, you have like yeah. two teams kind of parallel on two separate gang lines in front of it. Is that the setup? Or? no no just one gang line but it's like three or four tug lines off of each section you know so three or four it's like so it's just like you'll have off like one fan section fan. you'll have yeah fan like a fan like a hybrid you know greenland in alaska hybrid <laughs> situation or something yeah. that's wild yeah. yeah that's that can that's something that you kind of have to wait to do you have to like kind of wait until like peak training to like where the dogs have been running a lot and it's like they're like chilling and they're kind of used to the thing. Whereas like this time of year, they're probably a little more hyped on the, on the first, you know, when it's 35 degrees in the morning and they, that, that, that yeah. autumn energy is pretty intense. But when you get down to the nitty gritty of the training and they've been running steady day in and day out, 40, 50, 60, 70 mile days, you know, then they're, they're much better team in close quarters, I would imagine. Right. They, they are. Yeah. And I do wait until we get snow. So it is, it is, they do got a lot of training before that. You're, you're right on that. And, um, yeah. And, um, uh, so during four training, usually I do like, um, two, two sets, uh, two or three sets of three dogs, three at a breast. And, um, yeah, it, it's, um, it's really another thing that my dogs love in Wisconsin is all the Turkey and all the, the deer. Um, we usually don't go within a mile or two before a turkey or a deer whitetail that runs across the trail and 
the dogs just perk up and and love to chase after them and they're always they're they're sightseers because we have so much um wildlife down there that they're they're always looking um looking down the trail seeing what they're gonna see next and chase after and yeah nice and i don't do a lot of long runs um like i do mostly shorter runs like um, in training 43 miles yeah in training yeah in training like before bear grease we'll do a like this last year i did a 73 i mean a 74 mile run and a 64 mile run and um but other than that uh, every training run before that was um 43 miles and then we'll camp we'll we'll run that 43 and rest for four hours and do it again nice um, and would you say your team like on the spectrum of mileage is like from like you know, Jesse Royer to Brent Sass mileage, you know, where, where is it at? Like, like this last year, I think I had 2350 on them. Um, so I'm on oh, the okay. lower end, you know, like I I'm under half of what Brent gets and um, yeah. Yeah. That's yep. wild, man. That's so, it, it just really is amazing to hear that, you know, that you're doing half or less of the miles that Brent does, but it's like, you know, it, the, it depends on the team and and again i think that hot weather strength that your team has it's you know obviously it's been getting a little warmer that is it's so much easier i would think for a dog team to go from being used to the hot weather and for, again cool. for us hot weather is like 35 degrees but you know to go from the hot weather they're mm -hmm. oh we're used to 35 degrees and then oh you get a cold step it's minus 35 I think it's way easier for the dogs and tell me if you agree, Ryan, for them to adjust from being used to the warm weather to, okay, we got to Now we got to kind of change the systems up for the cold weather versus if they're been training at minus 30, minus 30, and then boom, you get to 35 degrees. Maybe it's a little bit more of a shock to the system. Um, I don't know. Yeah. If that's what do you think? That's I, right. I, I absolutely agree. And, um, and for when we finally got cold weather and I did run this year, I, I took my eight hours quickly as I could to um, let the dogs adjust to it and get used to it a little bit before um, they were plenty capable of going further down the trail. But I took my eight hour at Shag Look, the first opportunity to let them uh, get get used to the cold there a little bit. And uh, yeah. But they got good coats. My dogs got really good, really good coats. And um, and even though we're down in Wisconsin where it is warmer, um, they they got really, really good dog coats. And also, when you, just to be clear, you're saying coats like their fur coats are great. Yeah, they're but also they they probably have pretty sick like synthetic dog coats too. I would think too. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, you know? yeah. I got some pretty cool. Pretty cool green coats. Yeah. Yeah. Put it on them when they get cold. Yeah. Nice. Brandon, so, go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. So, you uh, you know, I'm looking at your, your, I did rod the last few years before 23, you know, and you had like a nice consistent run of seven, eight, and ninth place. Um, I'm wondering, you get to the end of the 22, I did rod, you came in ninth place and, you know, I, I guess I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm wondering what, if anything, did you decide to change anything to get you closer to that top? And I guess I'm just curious, like, obviously maybe you don't want to tell us every intricate detail, but I'm just curious, like what were maybe some uh, foundational things that maybe you switched up or something? I am taking notes. He's at twenty three yeah. fifty on miles, so I know what I need to do. <laughs> I'm gonna get back into it. <laughs> um, yeah, my partner Sarah and I we talked uh, about what what different things we need to do um, to to train differently and see see if we have a better outcome. So we both agreed that she would take the team in the Bear Grease, um, where where um, I sometimes race it more competitively at a higher higher rate of speed and we talked about before bear grease training the dogs more at iditarod speed about 9.2 to 9.6 miles an hour instead of training 
And, you know, sometimes between that 11 and 14 mile an hour pace that is needed to win Bear Grease and other races down there, like the Gunflint Mail Trail race. And so we we um, dialed it back to that 9.2 to 9.6 and and kept our training at that speed. And uh, and then she raced Bear Grease and I, I watched from the sidelines. And I learned a lot about the dogs because that race handler handlers can support and be at every checkpoint and help take care of the dogs. And so I was helping Sarah take care of the dogs and we had another team in the race as well. And so I, I was trying to study, study the dogs from a different point of view as well. And what watching them and, and, um, uh, and in that, in training, we saw right away that when we would come back in from a training run, they they didn't seem tired. We had put them back on their tethers, and the dogs, the dog team that ran, seemed like they were running around their spin zones faster than the dogs that didn't run. Um, so we couldn't. It was hard to tell dogs ran and what ones didn't run because they had they they had a very fast recovery, and um, and so we just kept we just kept training at that speed and throughout the year they they were happy and they were they were healthy and so we went into Iditarod with a very very happy and healthy team and um uh, and they they are capable of going faster you know sometimes there might be a fox run across the trail or a rabbit and man the team would take off and and then when Brent passed me on the on the um outside of Yetna couple minutes outside of Yetna, he went by me and um uh, and i wanted to give chase you know like uh but um he was going a little too fast than what we wanted to go um so i i dialed it back stepped on the drag mat and um uh, but boy it was it was tempting to go <laughs> to um because the dogs were having so much fun when i let them go you know and i, I looked down at the gps and we were going like 11.6 and and um and he was he started pedaling and and um uh, and i was like well we'll sl- slow it back down like we did all your training and and uh that's that's not for my team i didn't want to mess them up the first day of the race so i i slowed it down and um uh, and and um uh, from that very very first every time that i stopped to either fix a booty or just just to um to stop the team for a second they they were fired up they were enthusiastic and and uh and i think you guys might have saw that when i'd signed into the check once they were they were vocal and they were they were feeling good yeah man i i definitely 30 miles again there's like 35 miles 30 ish miles into the race yeah <laughs> definitely not the time to to start racing uh that that's it yeah so um i mean maybe it is for some years who knows but that's that's one thing yeah, I'm it all curious depends about. On, yeah, it all ahead. depends on the team it all depends yeah. on the team you know and and um but um so, i i um uh, i really love seeing a fast dog team you know that i, I when I, <laughs> watching brent's team go by me there it was super impressive and uh, what a beautiful team of dogs that he has. Yeah. So uh, just to follow up, until the I did ride, your dogs never ran more than you said, I think, 73 miles at once. Is that right? That 74. 74. Yeah. 74. Yeah. And then we, that was my two. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then they, before, and then, well, in junior, I did ride, it was, they Morgan Martins raced my team in the junior editor out. And I think this year it was two seventy eight mile runs. And um uh, so they did they did do that. Um Certainly, yeah, so we like, don't we don't put a lot of mi- long miles on. Yeah, I mean like Brendan, when you like I would say, you know, not not that many people train their dogs to go like they, they don't just like run ninety mile runs in training, you know, like that's just not the style well, like, now nowadays you know we've had we've had people on but, that talk about going out and they're like all right we're going to do a 200 or 300 series yeah but that's whatever. like a series of like 43 yeah. mile runs or 50 mile runs he said you did series right ryan yeah i did i did a couple training series yeah yep 
Yeah, but but you're right though. Those guys do they do like sometimes 60, 70 miles and and they take them to Cusco. The serious Iditarod right, guys, um a lot of them, not all of them like Dallas doesn't go to Cusco. He he did, but not not um most of the time. And um but yeah, um I remember Charlie Bolding, he came and um told me, you know, Dallas, I think he ran it at, at before he was 18, you know, and he said he was coming into the finish line there and he looked back and there there was this guy passing him up and he said it was Dallas running in front of his team. Um, he he was running in front of the leaders and he saw this guy passing him up and going into the finish there and it was Dallas. Uh, I'll never forget that that story of Charlie, um, you know, how competitive Dallas is and yeah. Um, to get like 41st we, place yeah. or whatever, right, you know. What did Dallas's rookie well, year, Brandon? Is that guy? What 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 was it, place was he in? Uh, let's see. Give me a second right, on that. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, but that year he was racing as one of his dad's teams. This was before I think he was eighteen. He took one of him and his dad went out to Cusco there, and um, oh, and, this is Cusco. Yeah, Cusco. Um, oh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah, Cusco. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. But he's still, yeah, you know, I he's always Charlie he, coming back. Yeah, Charlie coming back and saying how special, you know, and how how um, incredible Dallas Dallas is going to be, you know, and um, that was that was one of the first times that I heard um, how how um, competitive he was, and yeah, yeah, fifty first. That was his first I did a ride, fifty first. But the this way. was yeah, yeah, for uh, but that but uh, he I've talked to Dallas about that. He was the goal for that was him taking his dad's puppy team. And just training him again. He wasn't trying to place high or anything. He was just kind of getting down the trail. Uh, so that wasn't his goal. But anyways, enough about that. So so yeah. I can't can I I want to get back to the 23 I did around. All right. So like I, I literally have a list of all your like run times and stuff. <laughs> I did this for the top like five or so. Um and I guess like talking to you now, it makes a lot of sense. Like your dogs haven't had these crazy miles put on them. And like, you know, we're looking at, you know, you're like pretty consistent with the breaks, like four and a half hour, four and a half hour. And like the runs are like six ish to eight ish hours. Um, and then I guess, uh, what was it? The power move was, what was it? Caltag? From Caltag, the unit was yeah. a power move. And then, I mean, yeah, doing the, uh, the, uh, well, that was Koyuk like, is, is, Elam, in your yeah. mind, is that when the race um, began the Cal tag move or like, you know, cause no, um, for, for me, the, the race began, um, on the Yukon river from Eagle Island to Cal tag, you know, um, I, I, when we were, we were clipping down the Yukon river pretty good. And, um, and then before we got to Eagle Island, Richie Deal went by me, and he his team was rocking and rolling, and that was another enjoyable moment of watching him go. And and um, and I I just kept him at that same speed, um, slow, slowed him down on the drag mat a little bit, and um, and and was was patient there. And then um, I I told my partner Sarah um, that I was going to make a move and um and here soon and she said i'm i'm excited to see it and um and can you tell me about it and i said i'm gonna make it on the yukon river here and um and that's when we we um first time that i that i talked to the dogs and asked them for a little bit more speed and um and that's when we passed passed richie and um and and um had a really good run into caltag and i think we beat him in there by about 20 or 22 minutes um Damn. before we got there you know and and we took off sometime a few minutes behind him there um from eagle island but yeah um at that point i i that's when the race started um that's when i got got um where i was wanting to um be out in front and and wanted to um, put, put pressure on, on those guys. And it, it, I've always led the, well, I shouldn't say it have always, but I, in my previous, I did realize I, I led the race. There's been times where I've been, 
you know, first into Nikolai. And, um, but that was the first time that I was, I was in the lead at that part of the race and, and my team was doing really good. We had 12 dogs. I think we had one of the most highest teams in the largest size teams in the, in the competitive range there, you know, and, um, when we dropped too early, we dropped one in Swenton and one in, in rainy pass. And, um, uh, and then we kept 12 to Unilever fleet. And, um, uh, and then I, I, when we left Caltech, um, I knew I was going all the way to Unilever fleet because the team, the team looked good. And so we planned, planned on that. I did bring enough food in case we need to stop and rest at old woman cabin or along the way that we could. But, um, but the, that was the plan was to keep keep going if the trail was good and the dogs kept looking good was we were going to go to unit fleet and um and try to try to have um try to be the rabbit at that part part of the race and make those um those teams behind us um rate race a little bit earlier than maybe they wanted to so for me again i'm like i'm the the noob here i have i've been on i've been on a sled where someone else was driving i, I guess sean let me drive one sled for like a loop around Dude, we'll get you a proper adventure when you i get do need a proper time. adventure yeah. honestly um yeah we'll make it happen but i'm super impressed so you your first long long run that the dogs have seen like that run into you know Cleet is like 10 ish hours give or take or nine yeah. hours or something like that yeah. 10 hours, five minutes. Yep. So it, I'm just impressed. Like right after that, like a four hour break and right back to it. Like what, what were you seeing in your dogs at that moment? Like, was there a thought for more of a breast or were you just like the dogs are, they're just, they're impressive right now. We're going to, we got to keep the pressure on. Like, what are you thinking at that time? Yeah. I thought since the dogs are looking good and they're eating good and they're feeling good, and, uh, and they, they, um, they were doing good. So I wanted to put the pressure on, on my competitors there. And, um, and I wanted them to know I was, I was serious. You know, I was, I, I wanted them to know I was focused, um, and, and was ready to race, um, to race them. And, um, and so then, I thought about going through Shack Tulik there, but um but I decided to to stay there and um and give the dogs another rest there and and see see what Pete was gonna do. And um but um I then I quickly learned that he was gonna do what I what I was gonna do. He was watching me and um and decided like um like I had a feeling that he would stop in Koyuk if I stopped there. That was a big gamble, you know, because um, if he would have went through Koyuk, he could have um, had an easier run to go straight through Elam and go to White Mountain if he would have went out a couple hours there. But um, but I was cold myself, and and uh, so I decided to to um, my feet was getting cold, and I wanted to um the dogs were doing good but i wanted to take care take care of me and um and so i opted to rest there and i i was crossing my fingers and watching if pete was going to go through and and um and i was pretty happy when he stayed there um how, that, how did his was, do- um, how did his dogs look when when you were waiting there and he came in yeah they look amazing that's one of the most beautiful dog teams there there is you know there yeah um so, they they looked they looked really good okay. super energized and and fast and limber you know that's something that we always watch and their gates coming in and they were perky and um yeah yeah it was impressive uh it's always like wow i'm i'm staying ahead of that guy you know like um that that team looks amazing and um uh, because you never see your team at that angle you know right um that's something that I, that I learned watching bear, bear grease is it's, um, being on the sidelines in that race. It's, it's, um, you learn a lot. And so I was, I was watching there and, and, um, and I knew at that point that they were up for another long run, but I thought I goofed it up on the way to Elam. When I got lost, I went three miles off the course there and 
I went um, one one and a half mile to the ocean there where we were supposed to be on land, and uh, and I had to turn the team around and mush back the opposite way. And I would look down at my GPS from that point to the to the trail was one point one point five miles where we where we got lost there. Um, so it was three miles total, and uh, and then I started pedaling there and and working a lot behind the sled and and they they responded and they were picking up the pace and and um and they looked they looked good there at elam so i decided to to um to do that long run which we did the year before you know we did the year before we went elam to white mountain and that was the first time in my mushing career that i did that move and um and so i knew it was possible and my dogs did it the year before and so we 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 went for it and um uh, i was looking behind my shoulder um looking there and um to see if pete was um gonna drop down on the sea ice because we're on the sea ice for a while you know and, and um uh, i kept kept watching and wish i would have brought my binoculars there at before the end there just to see if i could <laughs> see him but he uh, he opted to rest, rest his team there and um uh, and so that that gave us a a nice cushion of a lead by the time we got to white mountain. Yeah. So can I follow up on two things there? First of all, talk about getting lost. All right. So yeah. like I fell asleep. Okay. You, yeah, so uh, not, you fell asleep, uh, but you off. didn't fall off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I tied myself to my sled after Eddie's, um, uh, event there. And, um, so I rigged <laughs> something up where my, my wrist was secure. And, um, okay. I didn't want to, I was not an awful lot, um, uh, because I wasn't getting much sleep. I think I got 25 minutes in, in Caltech, 25 minutes in Unicleat and a little less in Shaq Tulik and, um, and 30 minutes in, in Koyuk. And, Jeez. um, so I was, um, I was, I, I was getting pretty, pretty tired myself. So I was not an awful lot and I just nodded off and woke up. And the, that trail was all windblown. So um, that normally you got just one trail and the dogs can't run off on the sides because they're, it's too soft for them. But it was all super hard packed so they could run any what direction. And when I woke up, there was no trail markers in any what direction. And uh, and I was like, well, I'll keep mushing for a while and see see if we come up on the trail. And I kept watching, watching. And and um before before long we came up to the ocean and i knew at that point we were supposed to be on the land so i'm glad i'm glad it wasn't farther away and um i'm glad i had something to realize that i was off the trail and when i got back to the trail i was looking for tracks to see if he went by me because i didn't know how long i nodded off you know i didn't know you know and i didn't know um uh when when you're tired and sleep deprived and um uh, I think it it just weighed on me more, you know. And I thought I I thought I blew blew my race, my chance of winning. All right, so I, I know you have questions. I'm going to just ask one more question and turn it over to you because I've <laughs> stolen a lot of this lately. You're, no, you're good. You're good. Um, so let's just go back for a second. You were talking about at uh, I think you said it was uh, Caltag or you know Lecle uh pete you were waiting there pete pete's dog came in and you were like i can't believe i'm beating the, that dog team and then strike forward to uh, uh, go ahead yeah i didn't see him at unicleat i left there before him i think i was oh, you talking about looking at, Cal at him caltag caltag i saw him come into caltag um i watched him come into um to Shaq Tulik and Koyuk and Koyuk. I was okay. watching them come into like Shagluk. I passed them along the trail there. And, um, so I, I was able to watch him come in there at, um, Shagluk as well. Um, so, yeah. So with, I guess I meant to say Koyuk when I was asking this question. So with you see him at Koyuk, right. And then, you know, you, you went through Elam, but he didn't. And I guess I'm wondering like, you said the dog team was looking good. I, I was surprised me personally. Cause I'm like, I'm waiting for, this is the most exciting part of the race for me. I'm like, all right, 
hopefully there's, you know, like I'm sure you want it to be a one man show, <laughs> but I'm like, all right, we, we had Richie and, and Pete right there. And, and then all of a sudden there was like that long break. And I was kind of surprised by that. Um, like, do you think something happened to the dogs along the way in that run? Or do you just feel like maybe he was like, man, Ryan's kicking ass. Those dogs are looking so good. It's going to be too, too difficult. Like, I don't know. I, I just, do you have any insight on that? No, I, I know. I, I know he's got a really fast dog team and a really, really amazing dog team. And he, he, he's uh, an Iditarod champion and, what seven or eight times he won the Cusco. Um, I, I knew, um, he's got, uh, incredible dog team and, um, I didn't want to race them, um, neck and neck to, to the finish, you know, um, I, I, um, but I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why he stopped, but, um, but it was uh, it, that's a big big time move going from Elam to White Mountain. Um, that that run isn't easy. Um, even if you got a fresh dog team, it, it it's it's a tough tough run and uh, and it's a r- risky move. Uh, but uh, I, I've seen the race won that way. You know, Mitch, when he won his first Iditarod, he went from Unocleat to Koyuk and Koyuk to White Mountain. Um, I think that was 2004. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, 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 it's been won on some big, long, long runs. Um, and Lance, when he won his first Iditarod, you know, 2007, he went Unocleat to, well, Caltag to Unocleat and then Unocleat to Koyuk and Koyuk to White Mountain. That's that, that's my, my move that I, that I'd like to do this year, you know, Unocleat to, if the trail's good, uh, you know, and I got, I got 10, nine or 10 dogs. Um, uh, you can know, know that I'm, I'm planning doing, a, um, making a move Unocleat or Caltech Unocleat and if the trail's good and dogs look good, I'm going to, um, um, go Unocleat to Koyuk. That that's one move that I've always wanted to do in my, I did ride career and, and Jesse Holmes has done it a lot. And, um, and, um, I want to, I want to, um, I want to do that move. Um, and you would also do, so would, I, would you also after that do Koyuk to White Mountain or not all three of those crazy runs? Well, yes. it depends. It, it, it depends on the dogs and um, how they're doing the trail conditions and where we are at competitively. If if I got a good lead, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to have a good lead, but if I do, um, that that's the all optimum spot to rest. Give them give them rest there. Um, you know, like why why chase a ghost? You know. Um, so, um, I'm going to, that, that if, um, if I'm in a move to win the race and I, and I, I ever had the luxury of stopping at Elam, um, I, I want to break that run up, but my, my goal, um, is to have a good dog team, healthy dog team where they could run Caltech to Unipleet and Unipleet to Koyuk and Jump Shack to it, even though I'm going to miss my buddies there, visiting them there. Um, wow yeah wow that's i've ambitious. never done that move. that's ambitious 16, uh, I did run. is has, has that been pulled off in the history before oh yeah yeah mitch mitch won it that way um all three and, big runs wow yeah you know you know cleat to caltech i mean caltech to unicleat and you know cleat and lance you know cleat to koyak and koyak to white mountain um, and then jesse holmes yeah. did it like in in one of the last few years as well you said yeah yeah his his rookie year he came in seventh place and he came he was like in the 30s um on the yukon river and he uh cut at caltech and then he went caltech to unicleat and then unicleat to koyak and koyak to white mountain and um and he did that as a rookie you know and um and it bumped him up to from in the 30s to seventh place and um so um 
you know, he, I, I look for him to have a really strong dog team and a uh, ambitious race plan like that too, you know, and in order to beat him, you might have to do a move like that, you know, cause I think he, if, if things are going good, um, uh, you know, he might, he might, um, he's done it before and, um, I, he could, yeah. Man, yeah. I'm over here getting excited for 2024. I did a run. I'm just thinking about the names. I'm I'm over here thinking about like you're talking about these crazy three long runs. I mean, they're not crazy to me because I I don't I've never been on for a long I've never been on a an they hour long crazy. dog run. Yeah, that um, run from Koyuk to White Mountain is like that entire trail is super hilly and dynamic and usually Dude, that- totally just wind is crushing you you know i've only done it once but i imagine that's pretty much a glock every year at the certainly oh, yeah. the hills yeah. my mom was born in unicleet so it's always fun to fun to be there and um and it like dallas always says that part of the race is his favorite part because then he starts starts racing and um from caltag to gnome and um yeah, it's going to be an epic race. There's a lot of good teams and there's a lot of good teams that's going to sign up. You know, I, I predict Pete and Matt Failer will sign up here soon. And, um, Oh, oh sick. I didn't we, know that. We got yeah, some insight. Is that insider yeah. information right there? <laughs> well, no, but you know, like Pete, he just had a second place finish and, um, and, um, he, and he had a amazing looking dog team and, and, um, it's hard to set those guys at home, you know, and, and I've been listening to podcasts, you know, and I listened to a podcast with Lance Mackey and, um, he was in the race and, you know, he's had a lot of health problems, um, in his, I did ride career. And, and, um, uh, he, you know, he said, I, he, he's, um, it's a lot of like torture and that I did ride, you know, he's at, he, having his hands keep warm and, and in the podcast, he was at cripple and he was saying, you know, like I got, four, four hand warmers in each of my gloves and my, my boots, my socks. And, and I'm just physically beat up. And he said, but I could tell you if I'm at home, it's more torture to me being at home than it is being in the Iditarod. The Iditarod's um, hard to step away from, especially when you have a amazing, beautiful dog team. And um, so, um, yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, so- yeah, I'll be interested to see who signs up. For, you know, Pete Ritchie or uh, Failure. You know, he's got the new. They they all have families. They all got kids. You know, but yep. you can you can you can pull off being a present with as a father and training dogs. You just maybe you might miss a couple of things, I, but you can pull it off. I bet two of the three will will race. Nice. Yeah. So when you got to White Mountain and or like let's White Mountain to Nome. You know, you had a small dog team. And you're starting to see like a little drop in speed, probably because of some of those big runs, you know, you're 900 something miles into the race or whatever. 14 hour run. I got to just go back there. Like surely they're not running that whole time. Right. Like you're doing micro breaks and stuff or what? We were doing small, small breaks, but, but most of it was running. And, um, I've done some long runs like that in the Cobuck 440. So, um, my dogs are, are used to, you know, 14, 15 hour runs, um, in the Cobuck 440. Those runs are all nine, 90 miles between each checkpoint. And, um, uh, and when you don't got a good trail, uh, it can be pretty tough. And, um, so one year, um, we, we were the only team to, to get to Cobuck and do the, finish the whole whole race you know they call it the Kobuk 440 because they go from Kotzebue to Kobuk and one year the wind was real bad and we we were the only team to ever make it to Kobuk that year and um and then they restarted the race in in um Ambler and the rest of the race um that we all raced back there to um uh, to Kotzebue and um so my 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 runs were in that race every run was about 14 hours and um uh, so we did, I think four or five of them in a row. Um, yeah. So there, uh, I know there that, that I had that same team, most of the same dogs. And, um, I know, I know they're capable of it, you know, and, um, and after I did a rod, they're trained up, you know, um, to do those long runs I saw. And 
So we just adjusted it training wise and, and kept their speed down and we were able to do, do those long runs there. And, um, nice. So yeah. like, yeah, what is like, all right, when you have a six dog team and you really, you know, you got this one run left, you got, you're going to go, you know, you're going a little slower. Like what, what's, how does your approach to running that team chain change now with, with this little, a smaller team, a little slower yeah. pace? Like what, we got what's to, going through your head? We got to White Mountain, I think, with the same amount of dogs as um, Pete. And then we got there with one more than Richie. And then we dropped, we returned two dogs there. We left two to fly back to Nome or, or um, on their own with the race. And um, so, yeah, we, we left White Mountain with six. And um, I, I knew we had a comfortable lead, but we were getting into the wind and the wind was really strong. And there was a few times where I had to stop my team and put the snow hooks in and go look for trail markers. And, uh, and, um, uh, at that point, part of the race, I never got excited. I, I kept my calm, my cool, you know, and, and, um, and, and acted just like it was a training run. We weren't racing, you know, we were just trying to get marker to marker and keep going down the trail and, and loving on the dogs and telling them they were doing good. And, and by doing that, you know, and trying to talk to Elvis and I, I, when I get away from the team, I, I would be, you know, talking to my team and Elvis would bark. And so I would know I would use that to try to remember or go, go in the direction that he's barking where I could find the team. again. And then when Pete went through that area, he went through that area in the daylight. So he was able to see the trail markers better than I was, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and that, that area, you know, with that typhoon, it took all the tripods down. I, when you ran, oh, it, really? there was tripod, tripod to tripod. And I think we saw maybe one or two tripods, um, that typhoon, um, broke them and washed them all out or, um, there was, there was no, no, no tripods there. Um, so it was marker to marker through that wind and, those tripods are pretty close together, you know? Um, they're pretty, and so pretty that clutch. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, so that the, was a big part, not having those to, to, um, run along to keep, keep you on the trail. Yeah. So like for a casual listener, you know, the markers, there's supposedly there's like 10 to 12,000 markers on this thousand miles of trail. And but they're little tiny little sticks. They're what, like an inch wide and they're yeah. stick, you know, if it starts snowing, those things might not be sticking out that much and they got little reflector tapes on them, but yeah, they'll, they'll get run over by sleds, the wind, the covered by snow, the tripods then- are freaking like 10 feet tall, maybe like six feet tall, but they're huge and they're, it's made of trees. And there's their permanent structures until they're not, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but yeah. they, they're, they're, that's going to help. That helps a lot of the trail breakers too, when they're trying to figure out where the trail is to mark it. But, um, that's wild that they got blown away. And that typhoon is the same. I'm assuming Ryan, the same system that, uh, Brent Sass, Jesse Holmes, and I can't remember who else. Went to Golovin. Richie Petey, Richie and Jeff Dieter. Yep. Yeah. That, those, so those they came, and they went out and helped and, and uh, helped Golovin, which is uh, the town right before the village right before White Mountain that at some point was a checkpoint maybe, but isn't yep. yeah. now. It used to be. Yep. Yeah. So you passed by it and they're stoked to see you. And that was confusing for me. I was like, what is this little spot here? I kind of want to check it out, you know, but I just went right through, I guess. Yeah. 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 Well, that's awesome, man. Congratulations on, a, on, so you, dude, Reddington. So you got your, are your parents are Ramey and Barb? Correct. Yep. And then you got your yeah, brothers, my dad raised Robert and Ray. Robert and Ray. And your yeah. grandpa. And another brother, Vernon, that he, he hasn't raised. Yeah, Vernon hasn't raced I did around, but he's he's a gnome where we get to visit him at the end of the race. And um yeah, and my uncle Joey raced in it and my grandpa. And I think uh, my family, six members of my family have raced and I did ride over 70 times in the 51 years of the race. And 
uh, my brothers, my dad, my uncle Joey, my grandpa, and I'm the first one of the family to win that I did around. So that was super special. And, and, uh, it was, um, been a lot of, a lot of years in the making and, um, uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of dog talk between us. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I was also surprised you were the first, uh, junior I did rod winner and I did rod winner. Yeah. Yeah. Remy Smith's been what? close. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah, I, I, I just pulled out that fun fact on you, Sean, man. I'm yeah, proud of you myself. Got me, dude. I didn't know that. <laughs> First person to win the junior and the real and the and the full length. I mean, I would have yeah. assumed Dallas, but um the year you won, he, he got ran in the same year, though. right? Pretty no, crazy. no, Dallas is younger than me. I, I got to race against his brothers, Danny and and Tyrell. Okay. And um yeah, yep. And then they got another brother that won the race. I think Conway um, yeah, won Conway. the junior. Uh, Tyrell won it too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Dallas ran, yeah, we, ran, ran the same year. He he was 17. He ran the junior. And I think his birthday is like the first week of March. So they proved him to run the real one too. So that he might be one. I think he's the only guy that ran both in the same year. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Well, I know um, Ellie Claus, she was real close to that too. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it was really incredible race in junior. I did a rod. Um, when I raced it, there was like 22 to 24 teams and, and, um, and it was very competitive and it was um, a lot of, um, that race is always fun to watch and, we we always make donations to the junior I did rod and my mom's on the board of the junior I did rod with my sister in law and they um uh, it, it's a real big big event for for us all and uh, watch watch it and it's it's a lot of lot of fun watching watching the up and coming sport um thrive and and uh, and watching those young mushers um it's it's a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, I I Brennan, sorry. Uh so we we're running out of time. You know, we're already in the negative times right now. We're because it's you know, we're we're over an hour. But I guess I'll have one question for you and Brennan, you can have another question maybe, but we've you know, we gotta be respectful of Brian's time here. Um so you referred to yourself as Eskimo. You're you're native Alaskan, of course. Um what is i think this is a question i get and i don't know how to answer all the time like is eskimo offensive is i'm like i always i'm always going native alaskan because it's just more vague yeah. and eskimo is more specific i think but what explain explain for that. me for me i'm very proud to be eskimo and um and it's not offensive to me at, at all it's who i am and um uh, and I am, uh, like I said, very proud and have a lot of pride in being, being Eskimo. And so it might be to some other people, but you can call me Eskimo a a any day and every day of the, of the year. Um, and it, um, and I'll, I'll, um, smile and, and, um, it's, it's who, it's who I am. And I, I never, it's never I've never been around anybody that has talked about it being offensive. Um, but I've heard of others that might, but, um, but that's, I think low, um, you know, low chances of people being offensive on that, but I am proud of who I am and, and, uh, and have a lot of pride in, in being, being an Eskimo. And that's so much fun for me to be Alaska native and run through and I, I did run each year and through the native communities, not just the Eskimo communities, but, but the other communities as well that we, we come through. It's um, so much fun. And, and to, to that I did run it's it, other than the race, you know, like um, I enjoy the, the people along the way and um, it's, it's, um, it's epic. You, you know how it is. It, it's, um, you know, you've been there and it's, um, it's hard to describe how, how cool it is when you're in these communities and how much fun 
they have with 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 us being there and uh, and how welcoming they are and um uh, it's you know i can't wait to be back yeah i know i i i, I do know and it, it was I, I get i was nervous when i got to all these villages like well i'm just some dude that just showed up and found his from, way into this race and <laughs> from georgia you know and then you know it was it was the weird covid year and they were still like really friendly and and uh a lot of people were like are you jeff king and i'm like no not quite <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah. <laughs> but uh it, yeah it was it's so cool to see these gnarly locations that people are living their whole lives in um really yeah. and that's what that's My, what makes the race so special is that you know this is a thousand miles of trail going through all these villages that are only accessible by planes or a snow machine or sled dog team maybe a river or boat but it's just no one gets to see these places like a, a someone who's uh volunteering or running this race uh you just, it's 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 crazy it's it's cool to such a special thing to be a part of it sure sure is i agree yep. brennan all right <clears throat> i, I got some marks i got some uh softer hitting questions um all right Maybe so you should have gone first <laughs> <my bad>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so i'm wondering when you're doing training runs uh do you listen to music do you just listen to the dogs like do you what's What's what does a training run look like where like in terms of like what's your setup? You just go out and run the dogs and that's it, or what? Sometimes I listen to a little bit of music. This summer I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. That's uh, you know, I listen to all your guys' podcasts and um and other other mushing podcasts as well. And um and um yeah, I I that's why I got a hold of you. I ran out of podcasts and I was excited. I was hey like, man, can you get can you crank out some more fucking episodes? Yeah, here, yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's why I reached out there. Um, but yeah, um, I I listen to music and uh and, at some some parts and then I try to catch up with my brothers too when I'm running on the trail. Mm. I try to call call them I, and um, me and Robert do a lot of talking uh, while we're while we're mushing. Yeah. Dude, Robert's a cool dude. I, I've gotten to hang out with him at, at uh Sheep Creek Lodge a couple of times and and uh I'd love to love to spend a little bit more time with him. It was it was fun. It, it was fun hanging out with him and it's been great hanging out with you too, man. You guys you're you're awesome to talk to. And I can tell I can tell you've been doing a couple of talks to this summer you know you're you're, you're you are you got you got some like uh pr like prepared answers already like no right, no no we not prepared, had some but like you've moments, you've, you know? you've 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 been asked certain things once or I, twice already I, I feel like i'm getting more relaxed with it and enjoying it um yeah but i'm i'm so thrilled that you know this race um is looking really good competitive wise you know like oh man Hunter Keith and, Eddie Burke, you know, I talked to Eddie three hours the other night, you know, um, and, um, yeah, um, one session, you know, just talking dogs and, and it's getting to that time of the year, you know, where it is, um, it's getting fun. And, um, I, and I have another friend, Jake Woodcock that I hope that oh, he yeah. runs that. I did. Dude, he's um, been, he's been yeah. crushing these mid distance races and he's like, I don't know, man, a thousand yeah. miles is a long way. You know? And I'm like, <laughs> come on, man. You like, you got this yeah i think i think he'd even crush it more than the 300s because of his approach and his his um dog mushing skills uh really incredible dog man and uh yeah very impressive and i can't wait to watch him race i did around one year and i i've been trying to talk him into it year after year here um and hopefully this is a year he'll do it and um uh, but a lot of a lot of it's fun to have dallas back and you know yeah. it's gonna be an epic, Ooh. epic race, um, dude. I mean, especially Brant too. Uh, I'm so excited, dude. It's gonna be great. I'm. Oh yeah. man, it's gonna be great. All right, yeah. all right. Hold on. So and Matt, Matt, Matt Hall. Oh yeah, yes. he had a great race this year, man. Yes. Jesse, Jesse Holmes. Yeah, and I look for for Hunter to really have a strong, strong. Uh, Are you and Hunter like homies since he's running your dad's dogs? 
Yeah, we, we, we he worked with me every day last summer. Um, in oh, okay, Durban. nice. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we're, we're close and he's, um, he had a couple of my dogs in his Iditarod team last year and I, I sold my dad one, um, named, named Bob and it finished, he finished with Hunter and, um, yeah. Yeah. And then the Hunter's going to have, Bob. Sorry. yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. And then Hunter is going to have one of my I did rod finishers. I leased one dog from my dad, um, and he finished the race with me. And Hunter is going to have him and his his team Seymour, and that's going to help strengthen his team even more. And um, his team, a lot of them were younger, two two and three year olds last year. So um, I I look for him to be really strong. And there's a lot of a lot of good ones. And may, hopefully, my brother Robert might come back and race in it too. Yeah, we would love to see um, Robert again. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Uh, yeah. well, right I, I think there'll be about 40, 40 plus teams in the race this year. Um, oh, right now okay. we got 30, but I think you're going to see some more teams sign up here soon. Dude, I'm trying to get on the Christian Turner program. So if you, if you know anyone that just could have, I could just show up in February and just, you know, get <laughs> yeah. out there, you know, let me know. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs> ridiculous hey thanks for for joining us ryan and uh it was really nice talking to you man and 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 we'll hope we get to do it again sometime um but yeah until then yeah and i i didn't mean to forget uh, on any other really good teams like nick petite and uh, oh yeah there's a lot of amazing dog teams up there um, absolutely so, yeah it's exciting and um uh, yeah hopefully um bear grease time and um we'll talk again i can tell you how the team's looking that's all right deal that sounds great hey uh before we let you go uh to any of the listeners if you want to take a moment just yes. to you know pimp yourself a little bit uh or where people can follow you or support you or anything like that yeah thank you we do have a website a facebook and an instagram page and it's reddington mushing and uh we we um I try to do a lot on there. I, I could do better. Um, and I, I'm going to try to work on updating it more. And especially as training goes on here, um, uh, uh, I look for more, more footage and more, more action video and pictures and, um, yeah. And, um, and, uh, I think, um, that that's all, all I got. I like to thank Inuchuk dog food and, um pike legal dog root. food and, uh, yeah that nook ship, yeah. dude that, that is the yeah. fattest dog you'll ever get with that stuff <laughs> yeah yeah highest calorie kibble there is and, um yep yeah um and um dogbooties.com i'd like to thank them they they've been making my booties for for the last several years and um and yeah there's a lot of good racing and uh races coming up and um uh, i i hope um you you can go to connect 200 in some of those races there sean and um and get some footage for us there uh, yeah think, uh, abs absolutely yeah. I, I gotta check out dude I, wade got me super stoked on the lower 48 races like I, yeah. I don't know anything really about them so i'm gonna we're gonna make a point to to see what we can learn yeah yeah there are a lot of good a lot of good races down there and um and it, it's 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 thriving it's doing good um so yeah yeah uh i mean i've i've lost that bear grease by seven seconds one oh time. yeah and, um epic at some of my most epic race and been there down there and um yeah seven seconds i'm in dude that sounds like some good drama uh, right there my, my ex-wife beat me um by seven seconds in that race oh yeah. wow <laughs> Oh, yeah. that that is that is <laughs> pouring salt that, on the wound <laughs> i thought uh, there was it, some drama in there i didn't know i couldn't remember what it was i remember it being something yeah well you know yeah, but she that, she worked hard at it and um and it was a really beautiful dog team and and um that's racing dogs and that ain't gonna be the the that's the first time she me that the last i know that is um <laughs> very dedicated and and good 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 dog musher and um and works at it hard every day you know and um yeah yeah that's yeah you you earn it you don't well, just good, you go good yeah yep good nice talking with you guys and uh yeah i i look forward to doing it again this winter all right say hey to your to the fam for me and we'll 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 talk again soon <laughs>